wild, trying to get wild. Back into the wild. Let's go, let's rewild. Come on, me and you. It's an airship. All right, so what line do we got here? Pink one. But what I call, I call it something line. else. Orientation. Orientation line. Might be on your test. No. It's still saying that south is there. I don't think it's going to be a number one for wing wall. No. Well, maybe Apple's just a little bonkers today. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no point. That's just so we have a line. Yeah. Based on one, that's like, the, the point is like, I need so many times. If airships are the answer or not, I think they are a part of the solution. But, I mean, what's the problem? I mean, is that there's a group of people, we often call them government or, or the state, that think that they have a right to tell you what you can or cannot do, uh, even if those things aren't hurting or harming anyone else. Cody, keep it, keep it. Just, just push the stake over. Yeah. Yeah. Make no mistake. Airships, I think, are maybe the solution in the sense that they offer a framework of thinking. Seven at the most. Mm -hmm. So that's three inches sticking four out. four at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So around eleven inches can be flat. Okay. And then slope. Okay. And then the slope can be, you know, a couple inches. Okay, yeah. So it's going to come from zero to three, Straight 11 in. inches on flat back to the building. And you got two steel in there, right? Oh, yeah. It's in. It's all done. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. You got it. So, guys, let me explain what's coming up next. So now we're going to go from no brain work to some brain work. All okay? right. So that's zero. Uh -huh. We're going to go back towards the building with a three inch incline, a little three inch slope. All right. okay. That's going to establish plenty of rainwater and snow melt. All right. okay. At 11 inches away from the tire work, we're going to flatten it out. I think they're amazing, which is why I'm here. And I think that Mike Reynolds is a genius for figuring out that, you know, all of these components to, to put all these houses together. Well, my career would be defined as a pitfall. And I would do nothing different because I like free falling. Because that's the way you learn. I have been called a hippie. I have had my license taken away. I have been called incompetent. I have been called crazy. I have been called arrogant. But we're doing what we're doing. It's working to some degree. And here's the thing. I'm not really going to lose any sleep if nobody cares and really i'm a selfish bitch yeah i don't know i always the stuff that you see on the internet it sort of makes him look like a heavy alcoholic sort of guy that's cruising around with these crazy glasses on his head and whatever but he's yeah when you're in the lectures with him he's incredibly smart i never actually sat down and talked to him so uh i think he's a brilliant man crazy cuckoo but still brilliant but I think everyone that's brilliant is a little crazy. Can often get caught in the traps of just doing things the way that like they should be done, but he just like forces through those barriers all the time and all the time and he's always thinking of new ideas. I'm not trying to convince anybody to build out of tires instead of straw bale or build out of tires instead of earth bags. I am saying, this is why I build out of tires. You don't have to buy it. This is why I use botanical cells for sewage. This is why I use the sun and thermal mass to stay warm. This is why I do it. Do it or not do it. It doesn't mean anything to me either way, except that there is a connection, just like with ants and bees and everything else. Even though I might think you're a dipshit with two black eyes, it's still better for me to have you, if you're going to be around me, it's still better for me to have you happy rather than unhappy like him. You know? uh, to me, the human race, our civilization, is like in a, in a dark cave at this point, and everybody's there. And we're kind of looking for a way out. And I stumbled over into a corner, and I saw a little crack of light, and I started digging away at it. 
and a bunch of people came and started helping me. That's basically what we're doing. Earthship concept is to be free of the system, which is just the opposite of what a conventional home is doing. A conventional home is a box that has been placed on top of the earth with a life support system that's fed to it. With any interruption in that life support system, the home dies. The earthship is in and of the earth. It's using indigenous building materials, natural building materials. It's using the sun to heat the home, to generate all its own electricity. The home is capturing all its own rainwater from the sky. It doesn't depend on the grid. If, you know, if there's an interruption in the water flowing, you know, we're not concerned. We know Mother Nature is gonna give us everything we need. Everybody wants a little bit better quality of life. They want a better economy. I think that's ridiculous. Why is the economy between us and sustenance? Why can't we go straight for sustenance? An earthship is much more than just building a house to provide shelter. It's also returning, uh, you know, very beneficial things back into the environment. It's like a... <laughs> It's like uh, the provider for our family, you know what I mean? It's like the patriarch in a way of the family, the house is. It, it just keeps giving to us. These are sweet peppers, and here we have some more over here. Let's get this one. Yeah, it's called mammoth basil. You can see that you can actually make use the leaves to make a wrap. Tomatoes. And over here we have garlic chives. You know, you chop them up and really good in salad. And it's it's like garlic, but it's not as strong as garlic. And then these are onions. Here's a big pepper. I'm going to wait one or two more days for that to get ready. This one's ready to make a nice salad. The Phoenix is kind of a, a high-end flamboyant example. It has double greenhouses that are buffer zones between where people hang out and the temperatures outside. If they're extremely cold, they're buffer zoned away from that. If they're extremely hot, they're buffer zoned away from that. Now plants can deal with a lot hotter and cooler temperatures than humans to be comfortable. So we use those places for plants and the plants eat the sewage and they put out oxygen and they make food. So we're trying to uh, weave together like a tapestry of all these processes of biology and physics to give us uh, sustenance without nuclear power plants. I believe that if a family of four lived in a building like this and maybe you have chickens and, and goats for the milk and you can make cheese you can have an aquaponic system inside for fish and um, I believe that you can sustain a family of four from your... You can eat any fish that grows in here 
and that's why we really have them is to get them to reproduce and get protein into the diet. We have chickens out here, we have eggs, we have chickens setting on eggs, hatching babies. This is not traditional, this is much more expensive and flamboyant than, than the regular Earthship is, but it helps us to learn them, refine them down to make them into a very uh, a more affordable unit. I don't know, and I, I see stuff going on all over the world. I don't know of another building that could do what the Phoenix could do. I don't know. You, you tell me if I'm wrong. To all things, power, water, sewage, food, garbage, heating and cooling. I don't see anything that is, is there for all of those. I see something out there that is better than each one of those on an individual basis. But why isn't Toyota or Hyundai or somebody putting a building together that addresses everything? We're a bunch of fucking hippies in the Mesa doing a half-assed job of it. Why don't some of you rich and talented people do it better? How long do you think uh, four people can live in the Phoenix? I could live in the Phoenix with three other people, preferably women, uh, forever. Yeah. And just call We've it. Done this before. Just a little bit this morning. A little bit sorry about the time. I find you. Hey, Ron, would you kindly say whatever you were saying to the group again to me, please? About the what? About whatever you were telling the group. Oh, I just didn't want anybody to walk on the water tank. <laughs> Oh, that's, I got it easy. <laughs> very stylish as well. They're very stylish. Yeah. These were all part of like the 1991-92 Mike Reynolds Reach projects. And uh, this was a community that was pushing pretty hard in the early 90s before they got shut down. These are just half built. It seems like, you know, people had big dreams and just couldn't quite finish them. I mean, it's, it's intense. I don't know, I just, it's, go inside, man. It's, it's got a crazy energy in there. Um, I don't know who built it. I don't know. I think Mike, oh wait, Phil. Phil was part of this, I think. Because he told me how the water drains and everything. Why did we build it, Reach? Well... When I was working there, I asked myself that just about every day as I'm hiking up to work. <gasps> but uh, Reach taught us a lot because Reach made us absolutely not be able to dig a well, not be able to hook into the grid. You know, there was no option there. Previously, the buildings were still somewhat tied into the grid and not um, autonomous homes. So Reach really was a, was a learning place. It is very difficult, very challenging to bring materials up here and to try to find a level area to stand on to actually build. So it really tested us. If we could build here on the side of a mountain and work within you know, this climate and this environment, we knew we could do this anywhere else in the world. Hey, hello, bad kitty. <laughs> Who is that? Who's over there? The Italians are watching us and we're dancing. Thank you, baby. Hey, thanks. Hey, make sure you close the cleaner in here or just close that door when you start. Are you there? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Rick's there. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. This is uh, the grandfather of Earthships. We figured out a lot about performance. In a situation like this Earthship many years ago, the rooms are very shallow. So the sun comes in very deep, charges the rock, charges the, the mountain charges the tires so it gets very hot so over the years of like figuring out how to get better ventilation deeper rooms better shades for the glass better glass we've evolved it a lot to help the thermal performance of the building Listen to the music played by the DJ.
I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, uh, and I decided to do the academy because I want to build my own house one day, and it just makes sense to build an earthship because they just make sense. It's just common sense that a house would be self-sustainable. So you don't need to anymore. It's okay. Um, Why I'm doing this? Because I see my family paying $1,400, $1,500 in heating oil alone, you know, just to heat their house that they live in, you know, and it's just, it's ridiculous and unnecessary. And it's just kind of, for me, don't make the same mistakes that my parents have made, so let's go find a better way to do it. The main reason is I want to build a house for my family. Two, actually. Um, the first one's going to be for my mother-in-law, a couple bedrooms, pretty, you know, fairly small so that she can live there and then build at least a three-bedroom packaged design earthship for uh, me, my wife, and our two twin. I live in the suburbs in Calgary. Calgary's just so spread out, it's a big city, and I was just tired of the driving always, and to live near downtown where all the life is, you pretty much have to be a millionaire. I haven't been happy about the systems or the fact that you pay so much in your mortgage and and you have all these bills, so we were spending at least three to four hundred dollars in bills besides your mortgage, which that was at least sixteen hundred dollars. I learned about earth chips and I'm always looking for alternative things. My family calls me a salmon because I swim upstream. So always looking for alternative healing. This is like ideal for me. I love this. I, I could live this. So the first simple survival, uh, the greenhouse didn't go all the way across. But now they changed that design now and they put the greenhouse all the way across. So let's start from the path of water. This is going to be in your test as well. So we're going to talk about the path of water. We catch rainwater on the vaulted roof, right? We build our own scupper. We don't make it out of metal. We can't always get metal everywhere we go that's not, that doesn't rust. So we just make it out of cement. So this is the roof. All the water that we use comes from up here. And on, on days like this, when it rains, well, the roof wants to collect the water. And so what happens is, uh, these are these parapets where the water just flows down. And then you can see this, there's a slope going down right there. So this is the path of water from the cistern to that hose bit. And that's all gravity still. And then it goes to an inline filter. And from there, that's run on the switch. So in the morning, you want to fill up your tanks that are sitting in the window, right? So I'll flip this switch and only use a little bit of power to send water up to cold water, it's cold, uh, right up to the tank. So we have three main hoses, which are just plain garden hoses that you can buy from any hardware store. Um, so if you want to fill up the shower, all you do is turn this and turn the pump on. And then, so the hose runs up into the shower. And then, so we would fill these up in the morning. And these are insulated boxes, so it's just like a gas can. I don't know what you call them in the States. We call them a jerry can. And now, after you fill it, you shut the pump off. Then, when you're ready to take a shower or do the dishes, you just squeeze that handle, and now you have gravity doing the work for you. We've got hot water, just from a from the sun. At the end of the day, you go to work, you come back to whatever you do, and you have warm water, hot water, or maybe not even hot at all. Sorry, it's simple survival. I think this is a great example to, uh, for students to live, because, you know, we, we, first of all, we see how it is put together, and also we learn about things that could be better. I mean, it's simple survival, so you can't expect much more. Everyone can survive in there, anywhere in the world, so. 
key is to be aware of like what's around you. To know like when you lift the sledge up, you know where that sledge is going. And you know, and you know where it's going when it comes back down. Uh, we do not want anybody to get hurt. Yeah. Three pens. So uh <laughs> You know, this is all funded by donations and by your donation to be here. So it could not happen without you. We can't do this without you. Uh, we need you. I was looking for a volunteer project, something that I could bring back to my community as well. And I love the work that Earthship does. So seeing that it was in Malawi, I'm going. Do we get pills? Do we fill this? That's fine. You won't even notice it in the end. The students are more for education, more to be able to manipulate um, our concepts. And the volunteers are more focused on that project and helping uh, the people in the area that we're trying to help as well. So this is the outside of the building right here. Right. So your tire is going to stick just like this. Um, I just got here yesterday actually, last night, so I don't uh, know the designs. So I'm just checking it out now. Uh, we're building a, a community center that has eight rooms and the idea is we're going to build two of them with them and show them how to do it so that they can complete the other six. E -E. E -E. Uh, uh, it's also putting out there the concept of thermal mass, which very massive walls uh, with the dirt pounded into the tires it keeps the rooms cool use materials that are normally thrown away like these bottles. We have been drinking thousands of these and they're in the walls. It's basically putting a concept of how to deal with garbage out there as well as natural and local materials. Today I was pounding tires and pounding tires and pounding tires and I'm very exhausted right now. Yes, it's hard on the body. Uh, it's, the sun is hard on the body as well. So this measurement at the end is 76. It's got to go straight up from there and wrap it around the tire. Yeah, you have to pound tires and it's hot and it's sweaty but we get to come here and gift something, so it's kind of become secondary and you just let it go like ants in the tent and, you know, not the food that you would choose and it's hot and it's dirty and it's difficult to communicate and it's all secondary. <laughs> Find me some nails. Find me some nails. So even when we make a mistake, we're all right. The water's rare. The women came. So we had to put the water before the mixture. And now it's just about getting the right amount. Okay. So it's very delicious. You guys look like you're doing a great job. <laughs> If you wanna, if you wanna place those, yes. make sure this is tight and just put them through there, and I'll twist them. Twenty-two and ten. Twenty-two ten. Eleven five. That's R to you guys. Uh, Rolling Stones. Nice. Booty and the Blowfish. <laughs> Rammstein. Rammstein. <laughs> So here it's different, we're building a community centre, we're not bu building big residential homes 
and to have the Earthship style means you're using the local resources or whatever you can find. Tyres mostly you can find everywhere. At the end of this project they're going to have something that they can have as a centre point so it's not only functional, it's a community space. They're going to have a library, they're going to have a mini bank. That want to help people, especially women, to do some development activities there. For example, where they got money, so they can go there and uh, keep their money safe, so that maybe they don't waste it anyhow. So if you go in there, you can see the light through, and you can see that right here is binding. Right here is hitting this first before the door can get fully closed. So this is a typical room, it has a skylight, and these are just cement vaults made of steel and cement, and the tire walls come up about a meter. And there's cross ventilation, as well as ventilation out the skylight. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Coming down. Uh, we minimize electricity so that it means that the solar electricity can provide what is needed to, to you know, have a very simple existence and this is definitely a simple existence, but it, it is sanitary, it is cool, it does use up garbage, it does provide water, it exhilarates the provision of food. We do these buildings in the developed world much more refined but using the same concepts. We have the global uh, model that comes from the package. The package is the rectangular shape one. And then we have the simple survival. Uh, there's also the hut. So it's like really good in um, hot climate, like the wind ship as well. It has that kind of big wings on the side. You have the, um, the flower, the flower um, module as well. This place is a very, very harsh climate with, with not much rain. Yes, we have lots of sun, but it gets very cold. The soil quality is bad. This is some of the worst land uh, around. <laughs> well, the water hits the roof, runs to the north, the gutters direct the water, and then we try to catch the silt out of the water. And out here, it's mainly dust from our cistern, so we catch rainwater, and it comes in here, and we filter it the first time, just sediment. Then after the sediment, we pressurize it, and then it goes to our second filter, just sediment again. And then here, it goes to the house. So we'll make hot water, and we'll supply cold water to all our fixtures. After that, we filter it one more time for sediment, and then our drinking filter, uh, so that we're able to drink the rainwater. 
If you have, uh, say, a 1,500 square foot roof, for every inch of rain, you get 1,000 gallons of water. So here in Taos, we get about eight inches per year. So on that size roof, you would expect about 8,000 gallons of water. So that's how you start to size how, how many tanks you need, how big your roof needs to be for the occupants. You know, that's why it generally makes sense to be one story with a bigger roof as opposed to two story with a smaller roof in this climate. We reuse the water four times. So the first time um, when, you t when you wash your hands in the sink or in the kitchen when you're washing your vegetables when you're going to make dinner or when you're taking a shower. So that's the first use. It goes into our planters um, where we grow food inside the greenhouse. Uh, so that's the second use for the plants. That water collects in the bottom of the one side of the grey water planter is deeper than the other side. So the water collects down there. And then when you flush the toilet, then it pumps water from that reservoir under the grey water planter and um, flushes the toilet. So that's the third time the same water is getting used. And the fourth time, it goes outside to a septic tank and then goes to another cell outside, a black water cell. And that'll be our fourth time we use it because we'll have plants in that cell as well. So then the water obviously goes outside into the septic tank, which is outside in here. So these planter boxes that are just outside have the black water going to them. Um, so in here they've got tropical plants growing, which don't grow in the desert out here in the freezing cold and the super hot. So I think this is, we've got figs and papaya. And it's pretty high up, so we have a huge fluctuation in, in temperatures, daytime and nighttime. There's a big difference, something like um, some 40 to 50 degrees. The Earthship is uh, heated and cooled uh, with thermal mass. So materials could be insulative or they could be massive. Uh, adobe is mass, pounded tires are mass, uh, mortar in can walls and the mortar in bottle walls is also mass. Mass is conductive. Insulation contains the temperature. When you insulate mass and you put it in its own zone, which we call the comfort zone, we are able to stabilize the temperature of the mass. The buffer zone works. Unless like you've got the doors open at night time until four in the morning, it might get a bit cool in here, but yeah, I've never noticed any sort of flux in temperature. And we've had some seriously hot days and some seriously cold nights, so it's, these things just work perfectly. So right now, this space is warm and that space is stable. If we wanted to add some temperature to that space, we would simply open the door, but then at night, we will close all these because this space gets very cool at night because it's right up against glass. I didn't have a thermometer in there, but it, it was at least 65 to 70 degrees every night and and that was with the transom window in my my room open and uh, I was warm every evening they're nice they work <laughs> but well, Mike took it even further Mike said okay the greenhouse can get hot because it's facing the Sun but we don't want it too hot so we inserted cooling tubes this is bringing the hot air from outside, brings it through this 30-foot tube, cooling it in the earth berm that's wrapped around the house, cooling it down to 55, 58 degrees, bringing a natural air conditioning flow for free. No power, no pumps, no fossil fuels. Free air conditioning on a hot summer day is coming in. That hot air in the buffer zone is rushing out and just pulling cool air to replace it. And that just happens all day long. And it works best during the heat of the day. So the Earthship is working two different systems all for the same purpose, which is to control our own climate.
Sailboat rope, sailboat cam cleat, super strong. These things are designed to deal with, you know, powerful winds out on the ocean. This is the exact same material. It's braided, it's half inch, maybe a little bit less on this one. They are designed to not release. These things are always a pain. See how to lock into place. They're designed really not to fail. And then, of course, to release, this is pretty challenging, uh, especially for an elderly person, but um, it's designed to deal with convection draw and the strength of the wind coming from the prevailing directions. How are we doing on time? It's 10 o'clock. I think it's possible to provide a way, a pathway, for individual people to deal with these things on their own in spite of government and corporations. And if you can give, if you can empower people to be able to deal with these things themselves, we can possibly transcend, you know, the government and the corporations, which are right now kind of controlling us and not really taking us in a good direction, but we, we seem to yield to them. I heard about Earthships probably about four years ago and I was going through a phase in my life where I wasn't totally happy with where I was going and I started learning more about sustainability and what I could just do you know for myself and the earth and feeling good about where I was going in my life. Each one of these homes is a self-contained unit almost like a boat on the land and I think that's why Mike Reynolds decided to call them Earth Ships, because they were like boats on the land. Uh, every single house, it does all of its own water collection from the rain and snow. It does all of its own energy collection from sun and or wind power. Um, we grow food and plants in the house. We manage septic right on site. And we do all of this while building with about 45% recycled materials. Monsanto is destroying all plants and food on the planet. Sewage is going into every river and stream. Um, you know, and on and on. Garbage is taking over and just being buried. No government and no corporation is dealing with this appropriately. It's time for us, the people, to decide how we want to deal with these things and basically what I'm saying is transcend the government and the corporations. Money still rules everything. Money talks. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, the reason that I love Earthships so much is this is something that everybody can do. It's not something in the future where you say, oh, well, in the future I will not use gasoline anymore in my car uh, when it's available. This is something that people are doing right now and we can make a difference just by the way we choose to live. And you can actually um, buy into a, a, a situation like this? Or? Well, this neighborhood back here is actually the largest sustainable community in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So it acts just as a normal neighborhood. How so many people would there's live about, in a unit well, like that? There's about 75 homes back here. I would guesstimate about 200 residents. And so anybody can buy a piece of land over there and you can either build your own earthship or have us come and build it. Um, but this is a totally off the grid community. So no water lines, power lines, sewage lines, no more utility bills. Mm. So the price of building really depends on the area we're located in. Um, here in Taos, we have a ballpark estimate of about $200 a square foot. Well, the law is never okay. The law is sort of established as if we were going to go on forever just as we are. But the planet is changing really fast. The population is growing. Things are being discovered, uh, good and bad. So the law doesn't address that. The law is kind of a static thing, thinking that all people are going to stay the same on this planet for thousands and thousands of years, when really we are we are up against typhoons and hurricanes and disease and, and, and virus and, 
All kinds of things are happening to us on this planet, and the law is rigid and doesn't, it's not flexible enough to move with that. So we have to work in and out of the law, and so there are many places on this planet where the law doesn't prevail. There's not much law in the Philippines in terms of building. We're free there to do what we think is right. That's one of the reasons we go there. This one. Made of wood. Made of wood. And hand, hand water, mga. I was there, top of the roof. All right, we got to come this way with this side about 10 inches. Right, whoa, let's nope. try that. That's pretty good. Let's go another inch and a half. Dead center in the back, and two on the front, and then we're going to squeeze it. After the Yolanda, a lot of people, they don't want to move out of their house. They don't even want to have a motivation to rebuild their house because they think that what's the point of rebuilding another typhoon will come. They rebuild every time there's a typhoon. Everything just blows away. And uh, the idea here was to make it not be a building that would be damaged in a typhoon. The houses that we created are not typhoon or earthquake proof. So um, yeah, we're looking for more sustainable solutions to that. They're good for the, all the families that were displaced. There's like thousands of families displaced after the earthquake, after the typhoon, and then there's some flooding. And that's why we're learning about the earth ship. Yeah, so there's elements of this structure that we've never tried. For one, this long spanning arch that connects the two buildings together. This is brand new in our design and it's the first time, so it's kind of a feeling it out. I'd say one in the middle and at third point. It would have to be like some thin shell that was just like paper thin that just went up and supported. Like one after another. How many of these at full span are going across? There's 10 of them across the building. Uh, yes, we can pull it. We just got to get another brace right here to do the same thing. On that side, we have 116 and a half. 116.5. Okay. The structure we did in Malawi was a flower petal design. It was a bunch of these rooms all radiating around the middle like, like flower petals in the middle was the water catchment systems. Now that type of structure is really good for a school or a community building like we did there. I think school is probably the best use of it. The reason we didn't do that here <clears throat> is because of the wind. The aerodynamics of it is designed to foil wind up and over it and let it pass by. So it has, has no like flat surfaces anywhere. The reason why this vaulted shape is tilted up is to move air up and over the building. That's also the reason why the, you know the whole exterior is all bermed and shaped all around it. So the inside it will be relatively wind free. Just like the pretty drawing. Did you see the drawing, Federica? No, not yet. So this is your drawing? No, Mike doodled on some paper and then gave it to me and said, here, build this. <laughs> so Can that's what we're going to do. Real quick. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's on construction paper, though. Look, there's squares underneath. It means it's um, professional. Let's see. Seven oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe with, uh, we should frame it. Seven, if it survives um, my wet pocket. Okay. I'm sweating there? a lot, yeah. so I'm okay. trying to keep Could it safe. But it's, it's, it's all secondary. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sweating this much, secondary. And this was a little bit different than Malawi because it was had a different kind of urgency involved. Um, Malawi took us nine months to plan for that. And this project we kind of put together in about a month and a half. When I just heard about the typhoon in the Philippines, I sat at my kitchen table and made a sketch and then got it up on our website and money started coming in. So 
I just said, is there anybody interested in helping us do this? And people started saying, yes, I am, yes, I am. And these people are coming from all over the world, from so far away, and we are all here for this wonderful cause. Before you learn that they never see so much foreigner like this. This is he's amazing. He, the smile on their face, the eyes, they light up, you know? Because I, I grew up here. They never seen, there's so much foreigner here. I think we just made a tally. There was 23 different countries represented here. So, I mean, that's a lot of people if everybody takes this back and becomes the leader of their country or one of them, you know, maybe this can, it's like a, almost like a virus, but a good one. The first two or three days was like the most serious shamanic purification of my life. And this is very similar to the purification that you will go through in training systems around the world, where your body gets broken down, just broken down. <laughs> and then it gets re-energized and you make big spaces and boom! <laughs> boom! That's it. You know, people think that it's just this crazy hippie, you know, a utopian thing and they don't realize how realistic it is to live this way, you know, in the freedom. I realized that it is indeed possible to be um, totally off-grid, like, you know, not needing the government for your water or for your um, electricity. And, you know, there's a way not to flush fresh water and not to let it out of the house because that's just crazy. All right, so we're gonna work now. We're gonna work on the the entrance. So what we're going to do is we're gonna extend these tire walls. So isa gulong dito, tapos yung dalawa palabas na. Hanggang tas, mam. Ilang ano sa gulong dito? Yeah, isa lang. Tapos dalawa. So how many layers? I'm sure, at least three, or we'll, we'll step them back up into this. So. If they don't understand the English, we can find a translator, but they're, they're great and their walls are really nice and they're dedicated. I have company today, so... Welcome, welcome. What is this? Sinkamas. Sinkamas. You know, global warming is real, whether you believe it's man-made or not. And um, these type of catastrophes are going to happen with more and more regularity. So it's time that people get on board, you know. We're going to run out of oil. A lot of big cities are built upon aquifers, water supplies, which are being exhausted and which won't be around much longer. And so resources are going to be a lot more limited in the future, and it could be the very near future. Really, I mean, whether people want to live in places like this or not, they're going to need to. This is a thing for Belize, a real client, a real job. This guy wants to build a home there because he thinks the economy is going to crash. You know, there are a lot of just really pragmatic, realistic uh, people that just want to build a building that, that they can run to when the, you know, the developed world has uh, lost its everything. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's already a mess, so I'm not waiting for a major disaster because I think we're already in a disaster. Really, the real thing is to figure it out so that we can do these workshops and seminars and things and show people how to do it themselves so they don't have to pay us, they don't have to pay anybody. They just, you know, it's, it's getting that information out there is the most important thing, I think, at this point. Like here, it sits on top of a stem. Mm -hmm. Here, I think it could just sit on top of the grade beam and we'll just frame down. And since he gave us buttresses off this sideline, mm -hmm. 
that's where we'll go ahead and pull everything out here because we want this one to line up and that's really the only important spot as far as the floor plan goes. I've been studying airships for seven years now, and there were a lot of gaps in the knowledge that I have as far as how to put these systems together and how to make them work. And so I really wanted to get that hands-on experience and understanding and knowledge in order to be able to apply it. And like I think when you look online, you don't see all, well, you can see the different models, but you don't really get to know how they work. And when you get there, you really can see how everything works, how everything's connected. I'm looking at taking elements of the earthship of reusing materials and creating uh, affordable housing for people that live in inner cities. Oh, yeah, that's cool. What you doing, dog? Yeah. I'm just like a sponge soaking up whatever they have to offer and I'm going to bring that back and use it in my community. Yeah, like food uh, production or uh, thermal system, like cooling tube or cistern, rain harvesting or grey water, black water usage. That's a universal thing. You can adopt it anywhere in the world. So basically my plan is to go back to India and uh, use different principles. If somebody cannot adopt the whole earth shape, they can accept one or two principles and make a nice life. about half a day work, half a day class, so it's actually a good balance. And it's not too difficult. I mean, sometimes there are days, for example, when we did concreting, lots of lifting, carrying rocks and sand, water, cement, mixing it, pushing the wheelbarrow, lifting up the bucket. So yes, that was a bit hard for a couple of hours, but it was okay. Pounding tires, I have found that it's not as hard as, as it looks. You have to use the, the weight of the sledgehammer and it works great. Right. You have to get into a rhythm with good reggae music, it works well. Did you leave them at the party place? <laughs> the beans? No. Well, you cooked your chili. No. Um, Valeri used that one. It was all of those things. It was pretty hard. Physically, getting here, it was hard. Like, I had not really been involved in physical work like that for a while. The altitude is hard, and then but I mean, just the energy of the community together and everyone working together and being on site with everyone, it's just an amazing experience. I think it's been easy. I love it. I haven't been too sore. The only time I was really sore was this week because I danced for an hour and a half on Sunday but <laughs> and Saturday night a little dancing. Um, but I think because I was building before, so my body was used to it. I'm a really good sleeper. Like, I sleep. Well, and it's hard for me to get up in the morning, and this is the first time that I'm, like, with uh, excitement going to school. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs>
I expect some challenges and hopefully some easy, so mediocre, but I'm gonna study tonight, so hopefully I'll do all right. What's important in the bucket? Uh, the hanging bucket? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, oh, I use this uh, straw, gravel, gravel, and, 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 and gravel. soil. Anything without the word dirt in it was the right answer. Was it? Package the model, amazing, the yeah, slope, the and that and roof. The... It's, it it's, is? It's, it's a, a V roof. Yeah. yeah. It's got a valley, yeah. yeah. After being here for two weeks, I think it was just very obvious that even though it's two and a half days away from everything I know, my friends and family, um, I want to be part of something bigger and something that matters and I think something that our world right now needs desperately. I couldn't imagine going back home to Chicago to step backwards and coming here is a step forward. Yeah, because having your fingers on the inside is really not that much protection. <laughs> I can't feel nothing right now. I got four layers on. Upside down. <laughs> awesome. You know, you get a dream, and if you can wake up and then if you can create, here's the situation that I would say is the seed for village ecologies, and that's what I'm going to call what you're doing, uh, whether you like it or not. And uh, the seed is to find a situation which obviously involves land, to find a situation where you can sleep there, have a dream, wake up the next morning and start doing that dream. But to get on your land, you have to go through some hurdles. You have to go through an academy, or, or, or you have to go through a bunch of courses, and you have to go through a bunch of stuff to earn the right to be on this land and dream. You have to train, like you have to train for the army or something like that. Mike's creating an army, <laughs> you know, and the guns are drills and hammers, and those are the tools, and I wanna be part of that process instead of just criticizing and criticizing about all the things that are wrong in the world and you know fighting against this person or that government or this corporation and fight for versus fight against. Like here it's great because you don't feel like being the black sheep like everyone has the same passion the same interest and they just everyone wants to bring that to wherever they're from but I feel like when I'm in Paris it's just like you're you're just gonna be called a hippie if you talk about sustainability or like having like greenhouses or like growing food in your house or reusing the water, people just don't get it. Every day is a good day. You're not working for the weekend. Every day, it's, it's a joy to get up. <laughs> 